you're thinking about buying a house now or in the near future, chances are you have found yourself experiencing these three things. First, you probably wanna buy something while interest rates remain at all time lows. Second, if you are shopping for a home, you're probably finding yourself having a hard time getting anything under contract due to the outrageous supply and demand issues. And last, you're likely questioning whether or not you should buy a house now at all or just wait for the market to cool off or crash before you finally make a move. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about the current state of the US housing market and hopefully help you with your decision on whether or not you should buy a home now or wait on the sidelines for a little while. If you're new to my channel, my name is Scott. I'm a real estate investor myself out of Arizona, so I've definitely been asking myself these same questions lately as well on whether or not it's a good plan for me to buy another house to rent or buy another house to flip. So let's dive into some data, but really quick before we do, if you're into this real estate related content like this, think about hitting the subscribe button down below this video. I'm posting new real estate related videos every week. And whether or not you decide to subscribe if you could click the like button down below for me that would really help to support me this video and my channel if you clicked on this video chances are you don't care too much about historical housing data but let's just run some numbers really quick to understand where we're at today according to the census and HUD the median home price saw a 23.6 percent year-over-year increase as of the filming of this video and the median home price hovers around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars as of the last report part of the reason for that is the total inventory of homes being down a lot with the total inventory of active listings in the US being down 43% from the same time last year. That means that not only are home prices up, but homes are generally selling fast and in a lot of cases for over their asking price because there's just less houses for sale available, but there's still plenty of demand. 31% of home sales lately are to first time home buyers and about 17% of home sales are to investors. The fact that there's such a large percentage of investors who are buying houses right now is problematic to first time home buyers because if you're a first time home buyer and you're putting an offer on a house but you're using a loan and then there's an investor out there who's also putting an offer on that same house but they're using cash, chances are the seller is going to pick the cash offer over yours. The average 30 year fixed conventional loan has been very low for a while now, but it's been hovering at record lows at around 3% since June of 2020. And there was even a period of time in January 2021 where it dipped down close to two and a half percent. These low interest rates were pretty heavily influenced by the Federal Reserve and their quantitative easing, which is just a fancy way of saying that the Fed has been pumping a ton of money into the economy to keep interest rates low to keep us as consumers borrowing and then in turn spending more money. Needless to say, all of this activity that's occurred over the course of the past year in housing has put us all in a position where it's a great time to be a home seller, but it's a pretty horrible time to be a home buyer. The good news for you is that if you are a home buyer, there are finally some reports that are starting to surface that there are some indicators that the housing market is starting to cool off a little bit. The main thing that we're seeing happen is that as of the filming of this video, we're not seeing the typical ramp up in home sales that we we usually would as we move from the spring months to the summer months. See, when we look back at the last five years, sales are usually up by about 14% from April to May on any given year. But this year, over the same time period, home sales actually declined by 0.2%. Now, obviously some of that is due to lack of inventory, but another thing that's interesting is that usually over the course of that same time period of April to May of any given year, we usually also see home prices tick up by about 3.2%, but this year the prices stayed flat. So these are some small wins for buyers even though we're looking at a very tight window of time and the good news for buyers is that this is the first time in almost a year where we're finally seeing indicators of a more balanced market. And by the way a balanced market doesn't mean anything bad for sellers it just means that through the summer months we might see ourselves in a place where homes aren't selling as fast, where there aren't as many bidding wars on homes that do sell, and where regular home buyers who are using a loan finally have a shot at getting a house again and not losing their bid to a cash investor. Don't get me wrong though, even though we're seeing some positive trends for buyers, most analysts are predicting that home prices will continue to increase through at least the end of this year and into next year. The reason for that is simple, and that is just that there is still a ton of demand for housing and inventory still remains at record lows. If you look back at this graph, which goes back five years, you'll see that housing inventory in recent history has hovered in the 1.2 to 1.5 million range at any given time. But right around May of 2020, the inventory starts to drop and it bottomed out in April of 2021 with only about 490,000 active homes on the market in the US. So the positive news for buyers about this graph is that inventory is starting to tick back up a little bit, but the bad news about this graph is that inventory still remain at record lows. So unless we see like a million people put their homes on the market at the exact same time, we're probably not going to see a slowdown in this 
uptick in prices. If you've been following my YouTube channel for a while, you probably care a little bit about how I'm impacted by all of this, so let's talk about that next. In a broad stroke, I'll sum it up like this. Almost 10 years ago today, I bought my first house. It was a single family home out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It was about 1,200 square feet. It was completely renovated and I paid $179,000 for it. Unfortunately, I was an idiot and I sold that house about five years back, but if I held on to it, it's probably worth about $600,000 today. Over the years investing in real estate out here, I've slowly seen the prices in my immediate area go from the $200,000 range to the $300,000 range to the $400,000 range, and now it'll take you about $475,000 to buy a rundown house that needs a gut renovation. That's just making it harder and harder to be a house flipper because every time that we buy a new property, we just have to cross our fingers that the market stays strong and that inventory remains low. Because if we pay top dollar for the property in the beginning, then we're going to need to sell it for a record price when we're done with it. The most recent couple of projects that I got in and out of went really well, starting with the Fairmount project, which I paid about $375,000 for, and then we sold for $600,000 after a full remodel where we opened up the floor plan, we enclosed the garage, and we did this awesome custom dark theme in the kitchen. Then there was a more recent project, which was the Culver property, which had a $435,000 purchase price, and we recently sold that one for $550,000 after a light remodel where we just replaced the floors, the paint, the landscaping, and some light fixtures. And then the last one is the Latham project, and that's the one that I've been sharing with you guys here on my channel lately. That one I paid $465,000 for, and after an extensive remodel, I plan to list that one for about $700,000 here in a couple of months. All these projects are very carefully hand-selected based on the neighborhood, the zip code, and the street that the house sits on, plus, of course, all the details of the house itself, but it still feels very speculative investing in a market with such a high appreciation rate. Realistically, though, there's money to be made in real estate regardless of what direction the market is going, so because of that, I don't plan on slowing down my investing efforts anytime soon. I'm not an economist, and I definitely don't have a crystal ball, but after studying the real estate market closely for the past 10 years, plus researching all of the data that I did today, here's my final thoughts. First is that regardless of what we see on these month over month and year over year charts, a few facts remain. Home prices are at record highs and average time on market are at record lows. Plus the percentage of homes that are selling over asking price is still at record highs and inventory remains at record lows. So with those factors in mind, I am personally pretty confident that even if we're starting to see the tides turn a little bit, we're definitely far from a market correction or a market crash. And when we think about whether or not a market crash is to come, we have to remember that the fundamentals now are just so different than they were in 2008. I mean, back in 2008, the run-up in home prices was fueled by a bunch of sketchy mortgages being written to people who couldn't afford them. The market was almost completely unregulated back then, so that meant that not only were bad loans being written, bad loans were also being sold, and that was a recipe for disaster. Nowadays, we have a housing market that is on fire, but the buyers out there in the market today are highly qualified. They're getting 30 year fixed rate mortgages. They're getting super low interest rates. Plus they're putting down big down payments in a lot of cases, or in some cases they're just paying all cash. So to think that a repeat of 2008 is anywhere in our near future, in my opinion, is just foolish. Take that information with a grain of salt and definitely do your own due diligence, but also remember that almost all millionaires own real estate and many of those millionaires attribute real estate to being how they became a millionaire to begin with. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, just one more reminder to hit the like button down below for me because that would really help me out a lot. And click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber because remember I'm posting real estate related videos every week and I don't want you to miss out on any of them but that's all I've got for you guys this time so until next time see ya